Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at one of the very helpful new features of TP3, which is debug mode. Debug mode is going to allow us to see particle data uh, as it's being processed by the rule tree. And debug mode, we'll go ahead and turn that on. You can see it creates this thinking particles debug log. Um, we're going to go ahead and create a couple rules first. We're going to create a generator, a particle draw, and we'll hide that window for now. Let's go ahead and at frame zero we'll create a particle. We'll come out here further in time. And you can see that as we scrub time, it goes ahead and automatically starts outputting information. This is uh, these green lines are telling us the number of ticks equals this and the change in time is this much. Um, we're going to close that and turn off debug for the moment because we need to finish creating particles. So one creates at 16. Let's create another out here at oh, 33 is fine and 46. And something we'll do is we will give these particles some birth. I'm sorry, give them some speed at birth. And we'll send them out the y direction. And speed, maximum 60 with roughly 50% variation. A little bit of direction variation. So what will happen with scrub to see those particles kind of shoot off and eh, go forward but with a little variation. And what we want to do is look at how do we get the debug information. Well, actually, let's right-click this guy and say Visible All. Any, any input or output field, if you right-click on it, gives you two options. Uh, you'll get Invisible if it's visible, and that'll hide it. Um, go ahead and show time again. And if we right-click it, we can also say Write to Debug Log. Uh, but it's very important, only data that's being used is going to show up. So right now this this time data is not being used at all so if we turn on debug it's not going to appear. And we already get the this is the default time information that happens when you scrub. Uh, so let's take a look at what we have to do to get this to appear. Uh, we're actually going to go ahead and kind of kind of cheat it just for this example. Let's say uh, we'll do something with a particle data operator because we need to get uh, the information that we want to see. We want to see the particle speed show up in the debug log. So let's do this. Let's actually set their mass. Mass is a good one just because we're not really going to use it. What we're going to do is we're going to say take the particles velocity and pipe it into the mass. So this way this velocity information is actually being used. It's being used to set the particle mass but we're not really using it for collisions or anything. It's just a way to get that data to be used so that when we right click on velocity and say write to debug log, now as we scrub you can see that the particle data information for the all group, all, all's velocity is this value here. Okay, so and it'll show this for every frame, every time sample of update. Right now our master dynamic time sample is set to per frame, so it's only going to do it per frame. But if you set it to per half frame, it'll output twice as many, uh, two per frame, of course. And we'll go back to single frame, take a look. So each particle, uh, right now it's just showing one, and it's showing, you see as we step forward, we only get one black line in between there. But as we get more particles born, you begin to see now we have two appearing. So this is one particle, this is the other particle, and it's showing the x component of the velocity, y component, and z component, because we're asking to see the velocity there. So this is very useful for debugging information. If you're wondering why, you know, why isn't my system behaving the way I expect it to, um, make sure that you can right click and say write to debug log and expose that parameter that you want to look at. Make sure he's being used and then see what kind of information is being passed through this debug log.